Hey you freaks, welcome back to NES Tips. We're going to start hunkering down on some requests for a while. If you'd like to make a request, head over to the playthenes.com forums and hit up the official thread. As you can see already, it's Batman this week, so grab your Batarangs, Bat Rope, and NES controller and let's start Dark Nighting. Enemies low to the ground can be punched while standing, and the even lower mines can be hopped over to avoid damage. There's a nice shortcut on the first level that allows you to wall jump past a bunch of enemies. It also saves on time if that's your concern. Your batarangs are great for enemies that fight from a medium range, and it also dispatches that annoying KG beast rather quickly. Kill him off is pretty easy. You don't have to move from the left of the screen. Hit him with batarangs when he zooms towards you. Move left if he fires above you. Watch for any shortcuts you might find on level 2. There's more than one. These will aid you in avoiding any extra enemies along the way. Use this level to experiment with Batman's wall jump and how high or low you want him to jump in each situation. Having the jump mechanic down early in the game will work tremendous wonders for you in the later levels. Timing and button sensitivity is crucial to master. Another jump technique that's a must to learn is dropping off of a ledge and propelling yourself from the wall you're next to. Sometimes there are obstacles above your head while performing moves like this, which is where button sensitivity comes in. Play this board a few times if needed, a little extra practice can go a long way. You can't steer yourself while jumping, but you can while falling. This advice could prove useful. The boss is divided into three parts. The first can be destroyed from the left with the spear gun while ducking and jumping at the shots. On the second one, stand on the right ledge and fire your dirks at it. Finally, punch the last one. You can get close enough to it to duck at shots and not get hurt. On the third stage, you'll encounter these big hopping beasts. When you see them come on the screen, stop and fire your dirks at them. They won't come after you until they're fully shown, so this is an effective way to finish them off before they get a chance to do the same to you. On parts where you have to be close to them, the Batarangs do the job best. Knowing what order your weapons can be selected in is a good thing for quick, efficient switching. As you can see here, these guys can be a pain to punch. The machine that drops enemies is an awesome place to power up, staying just beside where they land and punch when they fall. When three items are on screen, no more will fall. Grab these items at this point. If you're not careful, it's easy to take damage. Utilize this to get hearts or restock your weapons, of course. Don't touch gears on the wall. This part requires more jumping mastery, plus timing the enemy's flamethrowers. Giant tanks can be made to disappear by getting them on screen, then leaving and coming back. I think rotating your weapons helps this happen, though I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. At the Electrocutioner, successive Batarangs hurled in his direction deal a lot of damage. It's quickest to stand there and take his punishment. This reverts back to the importance of collecting hearts at the earlier discussed machine if need be. While traversing areas where enemies are slightly lower than you, select your dirks and let them do the job for you since they fire in a nice wide pattern. It's a lot easier than jumping towards the enemies with your fists. Some parts might look slightly like background on this stage. Always pay attention to what lies in front of you. Since we actually forgot our bat rope earlier, you can't make it across this gap. The best way through the path down is to move as quickly as possible to minimize any damage you may take. If an enemy is in your way, but out of reach, use the spear gun. It only takes two weapons as opposed to the Dirk's three. However, the spear gun can't fire through walls. Offing these guys before heading in that direction is useful because they're right where you need to be at next. When landing on the mini conveyor belts, wait until Batman has come up from his squat after landing to jump off. Otherwise, you might find yourself mashing the buttons to no avail. The tanks fire in the same timing, and you can duck under the shots at the first stairway, jump and fire, and know when to stand your ground and know when it might be best to run. The 
dual container alarm is best spot with your punch. Get on top of the middle platform and duck while punching. He'll move right through you if done right. Get them in a shooting pattern by dropping down then getting back on top to repeat the process. Once one of them are gone, go to the bottom and duck and punch. Watch the pattern of these chain arm enemies. They attack once then twice. You'll have to bounce back and forth on the walls later to accommodate for this. At this point, you might be a bit confused on how to negotiate your way past these gears. Well, it's possible but difficult. Do your wall jump off of the platform you're on, but very softly. When doing this, you also have to attach really close to the bottom gear. As you can see, it's very difficult to pull off more than once. What's more, there are a couple of these parts, which means if you want to conserve energy, you're going to have to. If you're not too worried about a little damage, you can always walk off onto the bottom gear and immediately jump to the next platform. At the top of the cathedral, you'll face Firebug. Stay on the left and jump his fireballs. When he launches himself towards you, throw your batarangs right when you're about to hit the ground. After beating him, get ready for the Joker. Shall we go into the men's locker room and put on our baggies and put on our baggies and baggies? The Joker's gun does three damage, so immediately jump it if you can. If you stand at the right spot, you'll be able to punch the Joker while staying in between his lightning shots. This is another difficult thing to pull off, but try it every time. If you're close enough to him, his gunshot will go right by you. He will also run through you while you're punching, so don't let up when he heads in your direction. Just keep working on this guy because he is undoubtedly one of the toughest bosses on the NES. When you finally give him enough of a beating, you'll get to see an especially brutal end for the Joker. And that about finishes up this episode of NES Tips. This game might be difficult at points, but it's well worth your while to play through it. On the next NES Tips, we'll hit another viewer request. So stay tuned, freaks!